It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Less than 10 years ago, Central and South America's pink tide was at its highest point. Most of the continent had leftist or center-left governments in power. However, since 2009, more or less when Honduras's President Manuel Zelaya was ousted in a right-wing coup, the tide turned, and now a conservative or center-right tide is firmly in place in the region. Except for the recent development of Lopez Obrador in Mexico, how did this undoing of the left tide happen? Of course, opponents of the pink tide say that these governments were elected or forced out of office because of their own policy failures. Another interpretation of all of this is that U.S. foreign policy towards Latin America under President George W. Bush and under President Barack Obama played a key role in reversing the tide. Now, this argument can be found in a letter from Under Secretary of State for Political Affairs Thomas Shannon, who managed Latin America policy desk for both presidents. In truth, it is actually a fictional letter about the advice of uh, Shannon, uh, what he might have given Secretary of State Mike Pompeo when he resigned last month. This hypothetical letter was actually written by Mark Weisbrot, our next guest. Mark Weisbrot joins us now from Washington, D.C. Um, he to discuss U.S. Latin America policy uh, managed under uh, Latin American pink tide. Mark is the co-director of the Center for Economic Policy and Research and is the author of the book, Failed, What Experts Got Wrong About the Global Economy. Thanks for joining me, Mark. Thanks for having me here, Sharmini. All right, Mark, let's start off with why you felt you had to pen this letter in order to draw attention to the undoing of the pink tide in Latin America. Well, I thought it would be more interesting and readable. Most people are not that interested in the recent history of Latin America. And also, I, I want to emphasize that everything in there is true, except for the fact that he didn't actually write the letter. But everything he says in there, the facts are all uh, sourced and they're all public information. And even where it refers to positions that he took within the State Department, those are positions that were documented in the media. All right, Mark, in 2008, almost all of the uh, South and Central American states had progressive or center-left governments in place, and this includes El Salvador, Nicaragua, Honduras, Venezuela, Ecuador, Bolivia, Argentina, Uruguay, Paraguay, Chile, and Brazil. Now, only Bolivia, El Salvador, and Venezuela, and Nicaragua remain with the um, last two of these, uh, one could say Nicaragua and Venezuela, in a great deal of trouble and in crisis. So give us a sense of what happened. Well, some of it was due to the uh, recessions that these countries experienced. So for example, in Brazil, they went into recession in 2014. And that's when the opposition began to uh, gain ground and eventually impeach uh, Dilma, the president, Dilma Rousseff, who uh, they impeached without ever actually accusing her of a, of a crime. And so in all these countries, there were various factors at play. But what I emphasize in this letter and in the form of Thomas Shannon taking credit for it is that the U.S. played a role in, in most of these countries where there was a change of government. Some of it is not well known. Obviously, some of it is. In the 2009 coup in Honduras, Hillary Clinton wrote in her memoirs that she helped ensure that the democratically elected president of Honduras did not uh, come back to office after the coup. Uh, but in others, you, you know, people don't even know. So for example, in Argentina, the U.S. government over under uh, Obama opposed loans to the government and blocked some at the Inter-American Development Bank and the World Bank. And this was a time when Argentina was having a balance of payments 
uh, problems. So that was important. And uh, they did run into some economic trouble. It wasn't severe, but I think it contributed to a close election result where the right was able to win in 2000, at the end of 2015. And also, I should say that uh, in that in the case of Argentina, they were severely hurt by a decision of a New York judge uh, to take 90% of their creditors hostage uh, and say that the government could not pay them until they paid the vulture funds. And that was very much a political decision. And in fact, the judge lifted his uh, injunction uh, as soon as the right-wing president Macri was elected and said it was because there was a new government that he was lifting the injunction. So that was a major thing from the United States as well. And you can go through all of the countries and some of it I've already said uh, here uh, on the real news. Uh, there, there was a U.S. role. And of course, we only see the tip of the iceberg. Uh, Lula was interviewed a few months ago and he said, you know, it took us 50 years before we found out about the U.S. role in the 1964 coup. And so uh, he was saying that to answer a question about what the United States was doing in Brazil. But you can see things that they did there as well. In fact, Shannon himself, uh, Thomas Shannon, met with the leader of the coup effort, uh, the parliamentary coup in Brazil uh, in 2016 when uh, the leader in the in the Senate uh, in Brazil of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Aloysio Nunes, came to the U.S. just a day after the vote to impeach Dilma took place in the House and met with Shannon. So that was a signal to everyone in Brazil that the U.S. was behind this coup. All right, Mark. Now, you argue uh, that, of course, uh, this kind of uh, U.S. policy um, had a role to play in so many countries. Now, give us some examples. For example, Haiti and Honduras and Brazil. Just remind people what the U.S. policy actually did in these countries. Well, Haiti is a, a, a good example because they kind of did that in broad daylight. They took the president, the elected president in 2004, flew him out of the country on one of those rendition planes, basically kidnapped him. And they didn't even care. That was under George W. Bush. But the effort actually began under Clinton in 2000. There was an election there. And the Organization of American States observers went there and they produced a report saying that it was everything was good. And then they changed that. And they basically had a technical objection to some of the Senate elections. And they used that. Then the U.S. government, uh, under first uh, Clinton and then uh, Bush, used that as a pretext to cut off almost all international aid to Haiti, which was desperately poor. And then they, uh, by 2004, after four years of destabilization, they were funding opposition groups. And they were also telling uh, the president, Aristide, uh, that they wouldn't, he wouldn't get aid restored until he reached an agreement with the opposition. And then at the same time, they were telling the opposition, don't reach an agreement, don't, don't make any agreement with him because we're going to get rid of him. And that's how they did it. And they, and they overthrew the, the government. And that was the second time they had overthrown the Haitian government uh, since 1991. And so that was just, you know, one example. Uh, obviously, there was also the Honduran coup. Oh, before you a, go there, in, in Haiti's case, they had the aid of a few other nations as well, France and Canada. That's right. And they got almost all the countries in the world to cut off their aid to Haiti between 2000 and 2004. And then in 2011, uh, there was a, an election in 2010. And in 2011, the United States actually used the Organization of American States to overturn the results of the first round of the presidential election. And in that case, they also threatened Haiti uh, to accept the results or they would cut off the post-earthquake aid, which was even more desperately uh, needed. And so they got to choose who made it into the second round and who became president there as well. 
And this really devastated Haiti in, in so many ways. I mean, you only had like a 20% turnout in the last presidential election in Haiti because uh, they people have become so uh, disenfranchised as a result uh, primarily of, of U.S. intervention. Now, one could argue, you know, having a poor country like Haiti, who is so dependent on the U.S., uh, they can, U.S. can flex their muscles and make sure what they want takes place in Haiti. But what about a country like Brazil? Well, I think they did, like I said, I think that signal was important. Uh, the, the show of support for that coup, I think, helped. There was another show of support when uh, John Kerry uh, went down to uh, Brazil on in August, August 5th of the same year, and he held a joint press conference with the acting foreign minister, Jose Serra, and they said talked about how great their relationship was going to be going forward. And Dilma wasn't even removed from office uh, yet. She was uh, still, the Senate hadn't voted yet to remove her from office, so that was another signal of support. Again, we don't know what else they did. Actually, we do know some other things. Uh, the Department of Justice was involved in the investigation, the big corruption investigation there. And so we don't know what they did, how it is that they managed to get Lula put in jail uh, while the banks who must have laundered, you know, the billions of dollars of corruption, there were no banks or financial institutions implicated in this whole investigation. So that's very odd and of course, you know, most Brazilians think that the Department of Justice uh, intervention in the investigation was probably political, and they have good reason to believe that. And and Honduras, uh, of course, Argentina, Venezuela too. But let's just dig into the Honduras case because I think that's also left people's memory. Yes. Well, in 2009, there was a coup, and the president was uh, in June of 2009. He, the president, was uh, flown out of the country. Uh, in the middle of the night, and he was, uh, you know, he was overthrown. And the first statement that came out of the White House was really, really foretold everything that was going to happen and showed what the real position of the United States was, because it didn't even condemn the coup. It just said, you know, all parties should work together. Uh, and try and arrive at a solution. And when a military coup happens in the 21st century and you don't even say anything bad about it, and they knew it was coming as well, we, we found that out later. So clearly they had time to prepare a, a statement and they don't even say anything's wrong. That was a, a massive signal to everyone that they supported it. And then as the coup proceeded and the government needed to establish its legitimacy, the United States was practically alone in supporting the election that legitimated the coup uh, later that year. And as I said, Hillary Clinton uh, wrote in her memoirs that she helped make sure that the elected president didn't go back, which was what all of almost all of Latin America wanted. And the U.S. manipulated the organization of American states to prevent there from being a stronger, stronger actions on their part uh, to put Zelaya back in office. And in fact, out of that came the uh, community of Latin American and Caribbean states, which the left governments created because of the U.S. manipulation of the OAS. And that includes all of the countries of the hemisphere except the U.S. and Canada. All right, Mark, there's so much more to talk about because uh, Latin America is known as a laboratory of the United States and its policies, and I'm sure we are feeling uh, those laboratory experiments and their reverberations uh, throughout the world. Uh, we don't have time to get into all of that, and we also didn't talk about the media strategies uh, involved in these kinds of uh, uh, political policy maneuvers on the part of the U.S. and how the media is used in that way and or how media complies with it. But we'll have to leave that for another time. I thank you so much for joining us today, Mark. Thank you, Sharmini. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.